Welcome everyone. I am Megan Kowalski. I am the Outreach and Reference Librarian for the UDC Library. I am joined today by Carol and Rachel from DC Public Library, and they are going to show you all the things you have access to through DCPL as a member of the UDC community. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and you will be allowed or able to view it on our YouTube after uh, the recording is posted and you can review it whenever you want. Uh, so I'm going to hand things over now to Carol and Rachel, who were introduced themselves. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat, or at the very end of the session, we will have time for you to unmute yourself and ask your questions then. All right, Carol and Rachel, on to you. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Carol Auerbach, and uh, I am a library associate at the Tenley Friendship Branch of the DC Public Library. Um, I'm going to be going over various uh, aspects of our website and um, helping you figure out how to navigate it. Uh, and my colleague, Rachel, will continue that as well. So Rachel, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Thanks, Carol. My name is Rachel. I am a library associate at the Cleveland Park Branch. So we're kind of your neighboring sandwich branches, if you will. Um, I do a lot of work with our online services, and I'm excited to see what we can talk about today and to answer whatever questions you might have at the end. Definitely, we hope you have lots of questions. Um, so first I have a question for, for you, the participants. Um, how many of you uh, are already um, members of the public library system? Um, or you can, I think you can just uh, check that you are or raise your hand or some way of knowing. Um, but for those of you who are, uh, I, we hope to be able to show you some things that are new to you. Um, those of you who are not, this is your time to learn it all. So at this point, um, I'm going to go ahead and start with the website, um, which is really your portal to everything DC Public Library. Uh, so you can see the screen, correct? You can see the website? Yes. Yes, good. All right, so one thing that I want to point out, this, this bar right here, the light blue with the uh, emergency sign here, um, is not there all the time, except that it has been there all the time for about a year now. Um, this is very important because our services are changing a little bit in various ways all the time because of what's been going on. Um, so in fact, things are going to change in terms of access to the branches uh, on Monday. Um, so uh, when you go to our website, which is dclibrary.org, there it is, dclibrary.org, um, you can just click there and it'll take you to the screen that explains what we're doing when we're doing it. Um, so for example, right now, you cannot just walk into any given branch and browse the stacks and so on. That is just not happening and is not going to be happening starting Monday, unfortunately. Um, but we still have ways for you to get books because that's what we're about, right? So um, let me get rid of that. Another thing that you'll see on this uh, homepage is you'll see this Ask DCPL window, the little chat box here. Uh, this is a way that you know, you, you've come to the library, you've gotten your car, you're all ready to go, and then you get home and you're trying to place a hold and you totally forget what your pin is. You can call the branch that you were at, except that we are not supposed to, we are not allowed to give out pin numbers over the phone. Um, however, if you go to the chat, you can possibly get it that way or they can contact us and you can give it to them. There are various ways that you can do it. Um, but right now we're gonna say no thanks. So here we are. The top bar here you can see has a lot of different drop down menus. This one shows you a map and when we're closed, if we have any special closings coming up for holidays or what have you. And all of the many branches in the system, there are 26 branches, well, including the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Library, which is our central branch, as you may know, downtown at 9th and G Streets, Northwest, uh, recently reopened after a major renovation that took over three years. It's fabulous if you haven't seen it yet. Um, and of course, here's how you can find out where exactly the Cleveland Park branch is. If you don't already know, it's right on Connecticut Avenue, about two blocks, give or take, south of the Cleveland Park Metro, and of course the same for the Tenley Friendship Branch, where I am, which is right at the corner of Wisconsin and Albemarle Streets, Northwest, across from the Tenley Town uh, Metro Station. So this gives you uh, access to hours, the location, 
the direct branch email address if you need to write to us about anything or ask any questions that way, the phone number to the branch, the metro, of course, the map, et cetera. So that's how you can get to the locations. Then you have events and classes. Uh, most, uh, in fact, all of our events right now are just like this one. They're all remote, um, but you can find out what's going on by clicking on the calendar. There are uh, virtual book clubs going on, uh, virtual computer classes you can do, all kinds of things. Story time, if you have children, um, this is a very popular thing to do. Uh, they are posted on uh, via Facebook Live. It might be on YouTube also, but I think mostly Facebook Live. Here are the services. This is a list of all the many, many services we offer just in terms of at the branch, what we can do for you. So for example, adult learning, there's an adult learning center at Martin Luther King, um, the catalog, but there's an easier way to get to the catalog and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, computer uh, Center for Accessibility, if you have any visual or hearing um, needs, if you have any impairments that way, you can contact them and they can help you out. Um, the computers, if you are a teacher in a public school, you can get an educator card and this tells you about that. Uh, get a library card we're going to talk about in a moment and so on and so forth. Meeting rooms, you can ignore that for now because right now we are not uh, letting anyone use our meeting rooms because of the limited accessibility to the branches. But in, someday in the future, we'll be allowing people to come in and use our uh, meeting and study rooms. Uh, many, many, many students take advantage of our study rooms. They're a nice little private space where you can go in and you can sit there and study and do whatever you need to do, work on your computer and it's quiet. You know, it's a library um, and you can do what you need to do and it's wonderful. And of course, all of this, everything I'm talking about is naturally free to uh, anyone who has a library card or even just people who walk in, you can use our various services in some limited ways if you don't have an account. This constantly changing screen here, of course, is showing, you know, some of the big events coming up. So it's constantly going. And then this is uh, quick access to some of those same services that I had up here and the locations up here, the how do I answers questions. Get a library card we're gonna talk about. And of course, if you wish to donate to us, we'd be very happy, but that's not why we're here. Then we have the research drop down, which uh, I think Rachel is gonna talk about a little more about the databases, teen services and kids services. Again, if you have children, these could be of use to you. And our many, many, many digital services, um, that are for everybody, it's, they're fabulous. And we'll be talking about those today as well. So right here on the home screen, you see this search button. This is access to the catalog. So this is the quick access to our catalog. If you are looking for a book, this is where you start. You can also scroll down and look at um, special categories of books. Um, and then as you scroll down, um, you get information about some of uh, some upcoming events about various books that we're highlighting uh, and more information down here about different aspects of the library. So now um, I wanna move on to the most important thing really is getting a library card because before you can borrow anything, you have to have a library card. So let's click there, get a library card. So the main thing is um, right now, because of the limited services that we're offering, we prefer that if you can uh, to apply online for your library card. And what will happen is you'll fill out the form online. Uh, you will get a temporary number. You can start putting holds on books and then you can come to the branch where you wanna pick them up and pick them up and just tell them, you know, I have a temporary card and they'll say, oh, let me give you your permanent card. And that's when you'll get your permanent card. Uh, in order to get a card, it explains here who can get a card. So really it's anybody living, working, going to school in DC can get a card. Uh, if you are a resident in, of Maryland or the close in counties in Virginia, uh, you can also get a card, um, but you cannot use those library systems cards at DC Library. So for example, you live in um, Arlington and you have an Arlington library card, you can't use your, library, your Arlington library card here in DC, but you can just go ahead and apply for a DC library card and then you'll have two different accounts, um, which actually I think many of us who work in DC public libraries have multiple accounts at various other branches too, other systems as well. So um, you can do that too. 
it's all free at the public library. Uh, so this explains where you have to, where you can get them and what you need, very important. Um, when you come into the branch to pick up your permanent card, or if you just come to the branch and apply for a card, we do ask that you have some form of ID, preferably a form of uh, a picture ID, sorry, um, something with your picture on it. So your driver's license, if you have one, uh, passport, if you use that, something, or even your um, UDC, um, can't think of the word for it, the card, your um, UDC card um, probably has your picture on it. You can use that. But then you also need something to back up the fact that you actually have an address in DC or you're working in DC. Um, in the case of, of course, going to school in DC, you would have that card. So, you know, but then we need something with your address on it. So very important to have both of those things. So picture and address, um, plus, you know, you could bring a piece of mail, uh, like a, you know, a statement from your bank. You can have that, you can have it on your phone. If you have a rental agreement that's on your phone, you can use that to back up your um, driver's license, for example. So various ways that you can do it. We're, we don't, we definitely are not making an effort to not allow people to get cards. We want you to have a card because we want you to borrow things and read books. So um, just take a look at that. And if you have questions, always feel free to call or send an email to the branch email and anybody can help you with that. Um, so you keep your card for a minimum of uh, for three years. Uh, it's a three-year privilege. Um, and then we just ask you to renew it, but your account will stay the same. Uh, also, if you are a student, um, but you don't have a DC address, um, you just have, for example, a, an on-campus address. I know that UDC now has on-campus housing or sort of on-campus housing, um, but in some schools, you know, there's not a, there's just a dorm. So in that case, um, we would limit the amount of time you would have. Um, if you have a regular DC address, then you'll have your full three years. Otherwise, it's a year and then you can renew it after that. Uh, let's see. So that's getting a card, very, very important. As I said, you can just do it online, apply online and come in and get your permanent card whenever you have a chance to come in. All right, so now you're ready to um, borrow some books. Uh, if you are looking for your textbooks, you will not find them here. So if there's a specific textbook that your math teacher or your, oh, I don't know, science teacher or English teacher uh, a textbook. We don't carry textbooks at the public library. Our, our um, collection is more general than that, right? We're trying to serve members of the general public. But you may find some things that would be helpful to you uh, even so. And of course, if it is English um, and it's not a textbook, an English textbook of some kind, but it's literature, um, we probably have it. So, you know, every, you're reading um, The Great Gatsby in English class. So you look for it, and this gives you all of the ways and places and so on where you can find the book. So for example, the different formats. So it's an e-audio book, it's an e-book, and of course it does exist as a, well, as a CD, and it does exist as a regular physical book as well. Um, it is fiction, so this tells you where to find it if you're looking for it. Um, then you would, if you want it, if you want to receive it as a book, Where's that book? There it is. Um, you click on place hold. The next step is to put in your library card number and your PIN number, which um, is the last four digits of the library card. And that's explained when you apply for your card and when you get your physical card um, or just place hold anyway. And you can go ahead and come in and pick it up. You'll get an email telling you that it's ready. Um, but for example, I was thinking about, um, thinking about textbooks. So I'm taking physics and it's really hard and I just want to get the book and I can't, you know, I can't afford the textbook. As I said, no textbooks, but we do have physics books that are more, you know, something you can read just as a regular person who's interested in learning more about physics. Um, some of them are a little more in depth, but most of them are pretty, pretty general. So here's a college physics one. This is uh, part of a series, um, the Shams outline series that could be helpful. Physics is not an easy subject, I said, that's why I thought. Um, so that's pretty much the general thing about getting using our catalog. Um, when you click on the book though, you will see down here where it's available, which branch actually has it, and whether or not it's available or checked out. Um, going back to the Great Gatsby for a second. Um, 
it's just giving me various things. Uh, let's check, let's click on this. Let's see who has it as a book. If I scroll down, I'll see that almost, uh, I would say every branch of the system has it one way or another, uh, but you can see that it's checked out in a lot of places. General collection means it's available, so you can place a hold and you might get it from one of the branches that has it in its general collection. Looks like it is available in various places. Um, and you don't have to go to that branch and pick them up, right? If you don't live anywhere near uh, Northeast or Palisades, for example, um, you can place your hold to be picked up at Tenley or Cleveland Park. That's what you do. All right, so I think I've covered everything about how to get a card and how to look for books. Uh, I think at this point, I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, Rachel, who is going to talk about our digital offerings and the databases, right, Rachel? Yes, wonderful. Thank you, Carol, for your wonderful explanation of the website. I know it can be a little bit busy if you look at it at first, so I'm going to share my screen now. I'm going to, oh, thank you, Carol. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, this is what we're looking at. So back at the website. Uh, so there are several ways you can search our databases. So if you go over to the search, you can obviously search the catalog and also the website if you're looking for events or articles, but you can also search research and articles. So for example, if I was looking into commute, or I guess commute has two M's, oh dear, great start, and school. So it'll bring up EBSCOhost, but within the DC Library website, and it'll have a bunch of articles available. Now, this is, I think, a little bit more useful if you are looking, not looking for a specific journal or if you're looking for an overview or something fairly basic. It can find you articles that you're generally looking for. Now, another way to search our databases is to go over to the digital tab, which we haven't really touched yet. I'm going to give you an idea of what kind of research you can do over here, and then I'm going to kind of go over some of our more popular digital resources but we have a limited amount of time. So I'm not gonna talk about all of them because that would take all day. I could, I could talk about this forever. So da -da -da, loading, if it would, come on, let's go to read and see if that's faster. Yes, there's we are. So one thing you can do is we have a lot of different news access sites, which you can use to access, for example, newspapers in Spanish, various newspapers across the United States. We have some historical newspapers. And we have ProQuest and Journal Finder, which you can use here. It'll have, for example, if you are beginning your education in dentistry, there are several dental journals. And it will show you a list of the different journals available. And you can search within that publication for Let's look up, that's an odd suggestion. Um, do, 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 orthodontics. No results were found, that's strange. Well, <laughs> I'm not in dentistry. Uh, there are a bunch of them though. There are like, and the biology in particular, the sciences are very strong, education, mathematics. So you just have to look for specific like databases for what you're looking for. So let's see. Da, da, da. Ethnic and cultural studies. That might be better for me. Da, da, da. So let's look at Alabama heritage and search civil war. No results found. I think we just have to go to full text access or something because I'm having trouble finding things now. It's embarrassing. I think it's just a good example to show everyone that your first search is never your best search. So this is why you do it multiple yeah, times. I did this on purpose. Um, so now here you can see there actually are some results. We're seeing some primary sources, we're seeing some biographies that are always useful. So that's kind of how the more, like if you're looking at journal finder for a specific genre of journal, because a lot of the time, more broad sources aren't going to get you what you're looking for. You have to narrow it down. So that's really helpful. I always suggest that for anyone who's looking for a good subject search.
And I often recommend looking at our website for newspapers because a lot of the times these days you do have to pay for that. And it's really can get expensive if you're subscribing to a lot of different newspapers. So that can be really helpful. Another resource that I always suggest people look at, I don't think it's in here, I think it's gonna be in the Learn tab. We have lynda.com, LinkedIn Learning, which you may have heard of the two of them. We have Khan Academy. So you can use those resources for free through us. You shouldn't pay for it anywhere. And now I'm just gonna give you kind of a general overview. So. Overdrive, I always tell people they have to sign up for. It makes your life so much better. So generally, Overdrive is a service we use for ebooks and some e-audiobooks. Um, and now magazines. We're, we're moving our subscription to that to magazines over there. But what you can do is basically borrow books through that. If you have an app, you have an you have an account automatically through that. You just like sign in with your library card number. And I often encourage people to double up on books. For example, if Almost American Girl isn't available in the regular, let's see, Almost there are 17 holds on the physical copy, but the digital copy has one of three copies available. So it's good to double check. And also if you've got a book that's very popular and you wanna make sure you get it as soon as possible. You can double up on holds, place a hold digitally and place a hold in the physical copy to make it more likely you're gonna get it earlier. I do suggest this for mostly recreational reading because if you are trying to get something for school, you really probably need it at a specific time. And that's not exactly friendly to how quickly holds turn over. I would really suggest exploring our whole digital resources site, especially if you're not able to come into the library right now, which nobody is. <laughs> but we really do have a vast variety of sources, digital and physical. And a lot of the time people don't take advantage of it fully because they're not aware of it. So we just, this is one of the reasons we wanted to do this session to make sure that everybody knew what we have available. Um, I highly recommend using our sources. I know that UDC has a lot of resources available, digital data and stuff like that. And you have journals, I'm sure, but it is always good to double check and see if you have access to something that you might not have because these things are expensive. Subscriptions to journal services are expensive and we're paying for them, so you should use them. Did I forget anything, Carol? Sorry, I muted myself and forgot to unmute. Um, I was just putting in the chat, um, but I'll say it now. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, we have a bunch of um, job search uh, databases that are very handy as well. Um, and I would urge everybody to look at those. They're, um, Let's see, where, where I'm going to share my screen for a second again. Uh, under digital, if you go to, I think it's under learn. I can share my screen again if it's easier. Yeah, I'm here. Can you see it? Not at the moment. Oh, that's weird. I clicked on share screen. So I can share mine if it's easier. So yeah, digital. Why not? Okay, so it was, um, I think it's learn. And then um, just to show, um, the scroll down just a little bit. Job Now, Brain Feeds Job Now is one, Job and Career Accelerator, Learning Express Library. Um, and those also have, um, at least Learning Express Library has, um, and Peterson's Test and Career Prep. Uh, those are four sites that can help you with career search. And also uh, they have, um, as Learning Express Library says here, um, they have uh, many of the, um, the tests that you have to take to get into um, different types of educational settings. So you've already taken probably, uh, you may have already taken the GRE or whatever, or the SAT, which I guess they're not even giving anymore. But um, if any of you ever need to take the TOEFL, if you haven't done that already and you need to, um, these are ways that you can practice doing that. But also these sites help you to create um, resumes and you know think about, you know, you're in, you're in school, but Maybe you haven't decided exactly how you want your career to go. So this is a way of exploring it as well. So those are just an example of 
some of the types of things that we have besides the research databases that are extremely helpful. We do also have test books for the TOEFL and for a lot of like the the, the NRX, Plurex, I can't pronounce that one, the, the nurse one. We have it for EMTs, we have it for paramedics. We have most uh, prep books for um, vocational exams and for like the LSAT. So if you are looking to get one of those, you can place them on hold. Right, you can look in the catalog for those as well. Um, on the other hand, um, while that's true, we do have a lot of them. Often they are already checked out and not available. So, um, you know, it's another way of doing it just by going online and doing it this way. So either way, whatever works for you and however you can get it, that's what we want. Now, if our students don't have a DCPL card right now, but they sign up for a temporary one, will they have access to these online resources immediately or yes. do they need to get that? Oh, great. Um, I thought <laughs> Sorry, I, was... I, knew, I knew what the end of that question was gonna be. <laughs> yeah, you, you pretty much have immediate access. I mean, I think it takes, you know, it maybe takes a few minutes or something for things to kick in, but, um, you know, it, it, it might take a second, but uh, but yeah, you'll be able to to do all these various things, so. And if and, they need help using these resources, what are the best ways for them to get in touch with you for that? So one, one way is to call the branch, uh, especially these days, since you, since it's so difficult, you know, to get help in person, um, call the branch uh, and actually starting Monday, um, the, there will be a person at uh, what was in our branch, um, and I guess it's Cleveland Park as well, formerly known as the Information uh, Services Desk upstairs and on our second floor, um, where you have someone in adult, in adult services, which is where I work, uh, who can go through all of these things and help you to get things set up, like help you get your Libby account set up, or you can't remember you know, how to find whatever research database you were looking for. Um, whoever answers the phone can help you with that normally, or they can find somebody who can. Um, or you know, you're trying to, uh, that we, we get a lot of questions about using um, Overdrive or Libby. Libby is the newer version of Overdrive. Using it on a, on a device like your phone or your um, laptop or your iPad or, or whatever kind of notebook you have. Um, so we get a lot of questions of how to actually use it on those devices. So we can help you with that as well. Um, also starting next week, we will have very limited access to our public computers. Um, so if you want to come in and use one of our public computers, you can call and make an appointment to use one. It's only, there are only five available at our branch anyway. I don't know what it is at Cleveland Park. Um, but at our branch, we'll have five uh, PCs available for um, people to use um, for 45 minutes every hour. Um, so you can make an appointment to come in later in the day. Um, you can see our hours up here, 10 to 2 and 3 to 6, Monday through Friday right now. Um, and so that's another way to get help. If you come in and you're using a computer, then somebody, a, a person, <laughs> a human being, uh, will actually be able to help you um, with that. You know, and do you offer we'll be standing far away from you, but we can help you. <laughs> and do you offer support through, I know you mentioned the branch emails, but do you have a service like chat that students could chat you? Right, that chat service on the website down here, yeah, where uh, Rachel was pointing, um, right here. You can um, you can access the chat, and they that's even better in a way because then you have you know focus one on one with uh, with someone on the phone or via the window rather by the on the screen. Yep. And getting into our online resources is actually super easy. Like a lot of the time, all you have to do, especially with the digital databases, is click a link and it will have you logged in as DC Library. Uh, sometimes though, you do need to create an account and it will just check your bona fides, make sure you are a member of our library. And once you have that set up, you can log in with your email and a password, or it will ask you to log in with your library card in, um, in OverDrive because you can establish multiple libraries in OverDrive. You can establish if you, whatever library is there, place where you live, and the library the, in DC and the library wherever, like there's lots of different <laughs> ones you can use. So you do have to log in with your card. Um, and, but the majority of the databases are just a link. It's super easy to use. You do not have to go in and create an account and like give them your social security number. It's just really fast and easy. Right, very, very easy. 
I know I, for one, I use the uh, Linda, well, now LinkedIn Learning almost every day. Um, and if you are a member of the DCPL or you want to become a member of the DCPL, I highly suggest checking that one out. It has a lot of self-paced video tutorials that you can use that are great for a lot of the programs at UDC. Um, so I want Carol and uh, Rachel, if you have any last comments, let me know. Otherwise, I'd like to open this up to Q&A. And students, if you could raise your hand and I'll unmute you, or you could put it in the chat. And we'll also give a chance for you to ask your questions when the recording is over in case you prefer that. Um, I did have one last thought that I wanted mm -hmm. to share is that people often ask, what could we do to help the library? And I'm saying just use our services. I know that a lot of people think that you know, it's inconvenient. Are you putting us out? Um, we are busy, but we're happy to be busy. Um, and the more you use our services, the more you're telling the cities they're important. Also, we want to help you. And you are already paying for our services by paying taxes in the district, by buying things in the district, by being a member of our community, you are paying for the services we provide. So we would really love it if you came in and let us help you with something. And also, we would love to save you money on Netflix. Please come take our DVDs. We have far too many. <laughs> so true. People love our DVDs. And also Canopy with a K. Mm -hmm. Look under, uh, what is it, view or watch Watch in the digital resources. You have access, you get free, uh, six free downloads a month uh, on Canopy. And it's thousands of movies, documentaries, shorts, animated, you name it, everything. It's all kinds of things in there. Not always so recent. Um, the entire Criterion Collection, if you're getting into uh, old movies, uh, that's the place to catch up on all kinds of things. If you're um, in the digital media program, Can Canopy is going to be a great resource you'll want to use all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely agree with what uh, Rachel just said. We really want you to come in. Don't ever think that you're bothering us or taking our time because our time is to help you. That's why we're here. Um, we are public servants. So yes, we love it when you come, when people come in and see us and um, ask us questions and we need, we help you look for things. That's uh, pretty much why we're here, right? That's what we do, that's our job. Um, and so we hope to see you at the library soon. Great. Thank you so much. I'm not seeing any questions come in um, right now through the chat, so I'm going to go ahead and end the recording, and it will be available on our YouTube later today.